we go to natural monopoly. So it's a here they wrote the natural monopoly occurs when the long run average cost per falls continuously. What does this imply? It implies that as the firm increases its output, its cost per unit of production start reducing. And this can only happen when a monopolist is enjoying what we call economies of scale. So look at what they said here. They said, in essence, when there are continually gains to be made from economies of scale as output increases. What is the economies of scale? We said the economies of scale is the, is the cost advantage that a firm benefits from as a result of increasing its output. So a monopoly, a natural monopoly will occur when the long run average cost curve continues to fall as it increases its output. So this may mean that there is only room in the market for one firm if all the economies of scale are to be gained. So for a natural monopoly to enjoy, uh, to enjoy uh, absolute economies of scale, it means it will not be able to allow any other firm to join the industry. For it to be able to gain the, the optimum profit or the optimum profit or to enjoy the gain of economies of scale, it must only be the one producing in that industry. So here they said, if more than one firm tries to produce this output, then the gains from economies of scale for each firm will be reduced and costs will start increasing. So why would, do we even call it a natural monopoly? We call it a natural monopoly because it can be, it doesn't have to coexist with any other firm. It does not have to, it does not have to compete with any other industry or any other firm, because if it does, its average cost of production would increase and the profit maximization would fall. It won't be able to make more profit and its cost of production will also increase. So if a new firm is setting up in an industry that has a natural monopolist, what are the implications? The, please do you get the point I'm making here. We already said a natural monopolist is that firm that is enjoying economies of scale because its long run average cost continuously falls. That is why we call it a natural monopolist. But as soon as a new firm set up in that industry, what are the implications of a new firm trying to break the barrier of setting up or the bar barrier to entry into the into the into a search industry? So what are the implications? Number one. One firm will tend to supply the whole market because if another firm tries to enter the market, it will not be able to compete as it will have higher costs than the existing firm. So the first implication is this. Because it's a natural monopolist, because there's an existing firm in that industry, what happens? The new firm that is trying to set up would not have the financial capability to supply the level at which the existing firm in that industry will be supplying. So that means a new firm coming to that industry will be incurring higher costs than the existing firm. So the first point is that a new firm setting up in a, in a, a new firm setting up in an industry that is based on natural monopolies or natural monopoly will be have will be incurring or witnessing higher costs than the existing firm in that industry. That was the first point. The second point: prices may be lower if the prices may be lower. If there is only one firm in the market and it passes on its cost saving, prices will be probably be higher if more than one firm supplied in the market. So if there's only one or uh, one firm in that industry, because it is enjoying economies of scale, that existing firm will be able to sell at a lower price. But as soon as a new firm is setting up in that industry, cost on in that industry will not be saved anymore. That means cost will continue to rise. And as a result, prices will soar prices will increase. So prices will increase in such industry. That is the second implication. So we said the first implication is that the new firm setting up in that industry would be incurring higher cost of production or higher starting co cost. That's the first implication. And the second implication is that in such industry, economies of scale would not be able to be enjoyed by the existing firm. So they have to share the economies of scale. That means they have to share the outputs level. So as a result of that, Prices will increase. So the firm will be the new firm will be incurring higher cost, and the consumers will be witnessing an increase in price in such industry. So that's the two points there. So then said, 
Okay, now the main examples for indus of industry that are natural monopolies are utilities such as gas supply, electricity, so electricity supply, rail networks, telephone lines, and internet cables. So, for example, Libya, the, uh, the General Electric Company of Libya, GECO, is the sole provider of electricity in Libya. So, if GECO allows a new firm, or if the government of Libya allows a new firm to start providing electric electricity services, so it means the new firm will incur more cost. That's the first thing. And price of electricity will be increases. So Gecko would not be able to enjoy economies of scale anymore. That is the point we're making here. So what happens to the, to the curve of a, mono, of a natural monopolies? And they have said the natural monopoly, OK, a natural monopolies will be able to produce where marginal cost equals to marginal revenue at output OB. So let's go out, let's check the goal. Okay, a natural monopoly. They said, in a natural monopoly, economies of scale are so large that not even a single producer could fully exploit them. So because it's a natural monopoly, there is large economies of scale, there is huge economies of scale in such industry. Why? Because the firm itself cannot only enjoy those economies of scale. That is why, Sometimes government would want to allow or accept new firm to set up in that industry. But the implication of allowing new firm to set up in that industry is that the new firm will incur more cost and prices might increase. So to, for a natural monopolist to produce, it will only produce at OB to make the marginal revenue equals to the marginal cost. So look at OB here. At point OB, at OB, the marginal revenue equals to marginal cost. So that is the maximum uh, output that uh, a monopolist, a natural monopolist can produce. But the mono natural, because in that industry, there is more to economies of scale. That means a natural monopolist could still produce at OC, where the price would be at MC. So look at it here. They said the profit maximizing level of output for the monopolist is OB, which is already known. So for a monopolist, to produce, uh, to make a maximum, maximum to, to make a profit maximizing level of output, it has to produce at OB, which is known, because at OB, our marginal cost equals to our marginal revenue, which is fine. Then they said competition would be highly inefficient, raising the average cost of production. So that is what we're talking about here. Based on the fact that a natural monopolist cannot enjoy all the, uh, all the economies of scale in that industry, there might be temptation for a new firm to set in. But if a new firm set into that industry, the competition will be what? Highly inefficient. How is it, why is it gonna be highly inefficient? It will be highly inefficient, it will be highly inefficient because the, the average cost will start increasing. So the profit maximizing level of output for the monopolist is OB, but output will be greater at OC where price is MC. So instead of allowing a new firm to set up into that industry, a natural monopolist should endure or should encourage should be encouraged to produce at OC instead of sharing production with any other firm. So to have an efficient, efficient level of output for a monopolist and to be able to sell at a lower price, a monopolist, a natural monopolist must be able to produce at OC instead of OB. Because at OB, the marginal cost will be equal to the marginal revenue. But at that point in time, there are still more that can be produced in, the, in terms of the level of, of output, which means as a natural monopolist continues to increase its output, its average or the long, its long run average cost will continuously reduce. So to be efficient, for a natural monopolist to be efficient, it has to produce at OC, not at OB. Because at producing at OB means that it is still not exploiting the economies of scale. So that is the point about a natural monopolist. Then we go to the benefits now. The cost and benefit of monopoly to firms. They said a monopolist is likely to have higher barriers to entry and can therefore earn supernormal profit in both the short run and the long run. Competition is kept out of the market and this makes the owner of the firm secure in the high dividends paid to shareholders. So one of the, one of the benefits of having, uh, having monopoly is that there is highly there is likely to be to have a high barriers to entry, which means a monopolist can enjoy a supernormal profit. 
because there's no any other firm that is existing in that industry. So it could charge any price that it feel like charging. It will be able to make a supernormal profit. That means an abnormal profit because it can charge as high as possible, which is an advantage for the firm. So here it said, however, this may lead to X inefficiency because the lack of competitive pressure, managers may not try to maximize profit. Instead, they mean to earn a satisfactory profit that is acceptable to shareholders. So there's X inefficiency, which means at this point in time, the problem about having a monopolist is that there's X inefficiency. Here, managers will not be thinking, there, there's no pressure, competitive pressure, which means managers will only think more of what their shareholders. They only want to make profit to ensure that their shareholders are satisfied. And that is inefficiency. That is X inefficiency. So that's the problem about no competition, in the, in, uh, no uh, lack of competition or lack of competitiveness in the monopolies or in the monopoly market. Do we get the point here? The advantage for the firms is that they'll be able to charge higher prices that will make them to make a supernormal profit, which is all, the, all abnormal profit. But however, there will be X inefficiency because managers would not have any pressure to do more, to improve their quality, to, to make customers to be more happier because there's no competitive pressure on, in that industry. The second point. So as I said, monopolists could choose to revenue, to revenue maximize or sales maximize because managers in the business gain greater rewards from this strategy than from profit maximizing. So, because it is a monopolist, they could choose to, to maximize their revenue or to maximize their sales. Because at that point in time, managers will be able to get more reward than making profit. Profit will definitely go to their shareholders. But sales, making more sales, making more revenue will be a reward. There will be reward for their managers. The third point here, this panorama profit earned by monopolists can be used for research and development. So the cost of this may be too high for smaller firms in competitive markets. So because it's a natural monopolist, because it's a monopoly, if a monopoly is making an abnormal profit, that means there's so much for uh, there's so much money available to fund research and development. So a monopoly, a monopolist will be able to fund or to finance his research. And it's R and D because it has enough money available to finance such projects. Unlike a firm, a, a competitive uh, like a competitive industry that's a competitive industry with smaller firms. Smaller firms will not be able to fund or finance research and development, which this is an advantage for the firm. So an indo uh, uh, a monopolist will be able to have funds availability to be able to finance its research and development. The, here, the next one, they said, monopolists can afford to invest in the latest technology and equipment to remain efficient and reduce the risk of competition, competitors entering the market. Another advantage for monopolists is that they will be able to invest because they have the financial capability due to making supernormal profits. They will be able to finance or invest in the latest technology. And investing in the latest technology, what does it imply? It implies that a monopolist will be able to be more efficient. Its cost of production would fall. It will be producing like more quality. The quality will improve, which means a, a, a monopolist will be more efficient in the market. So this would reduce competitiveness or this would reduce competitiveness in such industry because the firm is doing well, the monopolist is doing well. The monopolist has the financial capability to invest in the latest technology, which new firms coming in might not have the financial capability to do. So this might also take away competitiveness in such industry. So here they said, the next benefit is <clears throat> the monopolist will have the resources from its supernormal profit to spend on research and development. We talked about that already. So the monopolist will also have an incentive to spend on innovation. It will be able to exploit any new product or new techniques of production to its own advantage, safe from competitors behind its eye entry, behind its eye entry barriers. Productive efficiency will increase because costs will fall. Allocative efficiency will increase because the monopolist will bring new products to the market. So Another advantage for a monopolist is that there will be productive efficiency and allocative efficiency. What is productive efficiency? Productive efficiency means that the firm will be able to produce at a reduced cost. 
And allocative efficiency means that the Fed will be able to supply to the market and all consumers will be, able, will be well taken care of. So the firm, a monopolist will be able to enjoy allocative efficiency and productive efficiency. How is this possible? It is possible because a monopolist will have a lot of money to invest on innovation. So a monopolist will have that incentive, that motivation to, produce, to, to spend or to invest in innovation, on innovation. So as a result of innovation, new products will be discovered, new services will be discovered. So this would what? This would increase productive efficiency and at the same time allocative efficiency. Second to the last, said, a monopolist may reduce waste by avoiding supplying copies or substitutes for its products if it is operating in a natural monopoly. This keeps costs down and increases efficiency. Also, uh, the problem of duplication and the, well, the problem of supplying, uh, so, or the problems of wasting resources and duplication would not happen, especially in the natural monopoly, because a monopolist will be able to reduce all this by avoiding supplying copies. So a monopolist will only produce what everybody would need. So no waste of resources. It will only produce when it is needed. And the last point here is the government may set high level of tax on monopoly profits. So this high taxation will not distort the market as it will only reduce supernormal profits. It will not cause the monopolies to leave the industry and therefore reduce remain, therefore resources remain allocated to this industry. So it becomes an advantage also for the economy because government might be able to charge higher level of tax. And this level, higher level of tax would not affect a monopolist. It will only reduce the supernormal profit. As a result, the monopolies will still remain in the market, which is an advantage. So there will still be allocation, allocative efficiency. So what are the costs and benefits to monopoly? What are the costs and benefits of monopoly to consumers? So what are the benefits of monopolies to consumers? And what are the costs of monopolies to consumers? First, a monopolies as a profit maximizer is likely to set prices above the, that expected in the competitive market. So a monopolist will charge higher prices because it makes supernormal profit. So this will mean that consumers will be buying at a higher price. And this will lead to what? A loss of consumer surplus and the product is under consumed relative to the consumption in the competitive market. So the first point is that a monopoly which, which happens to be a profit maximizer or a price, uh, a price giver or a price maker will charge higher prices. And this will result to consumers not be able to enjoy consumer surplus. And also there will be over, uh, there will be under consumption of goods, or like if it is in a competitive market where prices will be worth lower. So they said this is shown, the price charge in the competitive market is where demand equals supply at price of P1. So this is a competitive market and this is a pure monopoly. What happens with a competitive market? In a competitive market, prices will be charged at P1, Q1. So here, it will be this equilibrium price. But for a, for a natural monopoly, what happens to a natural monopoly? Here they said, the price charge in the competitive market, yes. However, a monopoly, a monopoly will produce at an output where ML is at MC, assuming that MC is the supply curve. This leads to an output of Q2 and the price of P2. Where this output means the demand curve, the output of a monopoly is therefore lower by the amount Q1 minus Q2, and the price is higher by P1 to P2. So for a natural monopoly, a natural monopoly will charge at where price is P2. So at price P2, the quantity will supply will be Q2. So a monopoly wants to enjoy supernormal profit. It wants to charge higher prices to make more profit. And the monopoly will not charge, will sell lower, will only produce at P2. So to at P1 to Q1, the output level in the market supply, it's okay at P1, Q1. But for a monopolist to charge, to make maximum profit, it will have to increase its price to P2, where the quantity supply, the output would reduce to Q2, from Q1 to Q2. So the point is that for a natural monopoly or a pure monopoly, the demand in the market will be less, that the demand in the market, the supply in the market will be less than the demand. That is the only way the monopoly will be able to charge a higher price. So 
For monopolies to charge a higher price, it has to reduce the quantity sold to the market. So to sell it, to reduce the quantity sold to the market, that means output will fall from Q1 to Q2 and prices will rise from P1 to P2. So that means in conclusion, in summary, a monopoly will lose, uh, a monopolist, consumers will not be able to enjoy consumer surplus. There will be net loss of consumer surplus because monopolies will charge higher prices. Unlike in the competitive market, where prices are charged based on the demand for and the supply of the product. So that's all about natural monopoly. Thank you.